Alright, so this is basically going to be me fanboying over the deconstructive approach to the series Disenchanted. If you've ever seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about, and if you haven't, you've been warned. Just, just so you know. Disenchanted. This is a series that takes a metric ton of the tropes we typically associate with fantasy, high fantasy, that sort of thing, takes a modern, jaded, and almost nihilistic dump on most of them, kind of like what you'd see with uh, Bojack Horseman. And what I mean by that is they end up getting deconstructed to absolute hell, and then in season two, they completely reconstruct them in a modernist, skeptical sense. It's a wild trip to see how they've taken Tolkien-style fantasy and essentially transferred a modern party girl into the main role. And it's crazy the amount of hijinks it gets up. Speaking of which, let's actually talk about Bean. Yeah, no, seriously, that's her name. So technically it's a nickname because her real name is Pia Beanie Maria Beanie de la Rochambeau Grunkowitz. Honorable Ambassador Tia Beanie, Maria Beanie, De La Rochambeau, Drunkowitz. Uh, and I blame Fry for having too simple of a name for Matt Groening. He decided to go a little bit crazy with this one. Like, Matt at Helm, some of the most prolific series basically ever. The first one you should all know, The Simpsons, which is basically an interpretation of the modern era, um, which is why it changes so dramatically over the fucking 25 plus seasons that they've had, um, which is you know, its own thing. Then you, of course, have the second series, which is not that big. It's just, uh, fucking Futurama. The thing that was made famous by Philip J. Fry and Leela Taranga with their super meta commentary about the whole nature of humanity in an ultra-futuristic world where people would honestly be just as self-absorbed as they are now, but they would have ray guns, super fast space travel, aliens and all kinds of craziness and unfortunately the aliens are just as nuts as everybody else now move your lazy asses and start scrubbing the ship like i ordered you to <sighs> you don't have to get so mad leela yeah fry already wiped off some of the dirt with his finger so the thing you will no have noticed here is that most of these characters names are all relatively simple and then you've got b which is a, kind of a very uh leela kind of name for the character um, and actually you can really see a lot of the sort of aspects that made Leela quite interesting and entertaining to watch being kind of transferred into Bean. Um, but this time Bean is the main character. The third show is a representation of how he interprets the past if it was seen from a modern lens, where the female protagonist is growing up in a world where men control basically everything. And it's for no better reason than birthright or through brute force. Tia Beanie is a rebellious, drunk, defiant princess in a magical kingdom who wishes for a life of adventure and generally avoiding her responsibility as a princess in a kingdom that if she ruled the world for even like a couple of days, and we know this because it's actually happened a few times, she's done it and it's totally fallen the fuck apart. Over, everyone out, come on guys, look alive. I don't think they can anymore. Huh? Seized him! Uh, to really sell that she's kind of not what you'd expect from your typical princess trope, imagine Princess Fiona if she was a belligerent drunkard <laughs> who befriends a literal hell demon and kills her betrothed. Actually, I'd be fine if someone could just uh, slide my head up a bit. Twice. Did it work? All hands brace for mermaids and their irresistible song. If it's smooth jazz, I will destroy this place. To get out of an arranged marriage. I'm not even joking. It's probably three times, really. A bit. What's happening? Well, this is odd. The show itself seems to take this crazy meta level of joy in deconstructing and um, realistically reconstructing the tropes of typical high fantasy in the medieval era um, in a very sort of jaded 21st century modern sort of everything is terrible kind of way 
but also with the fun kind of traditions of everybody's totally crazy drunk and there's plague carts everywhere. And it's kind of an interesting integration. But they also actually have the kind of stylings of steampunk, which is basically this idea that most people show up with where it's an alternate future interpretations of the modern world, where instead of the sort of oil revolution and everything that springs from that, we actually have a modern world based on steam, or as modern as like the 1820s generally ends up being. This can be seen where other characters in the show, outside of Bean, play almost like a runaway campaign of D&D, where the players are just taking a completely insane route through the DM storyline. And the DM is honestly just trying to save the story, damn it. The one thing I definitely need to keep shouting to high heavens is the fact that despite Bean being easily the least enthused by the way the world seems to want her to go, the fever dream of Matt Groening's medieval mashup of modern anachronisms like donkey pulled carts that act exactly like modern police cars actually manages to pull off such an insanely detailed story which seems to take into account Bean's behavior and it even pushes things in the direction of the greater scope story that's actually happening on in the background. Our little emissary Lucy is successfully corrupting Tia Beanie's mind and soul. Which becomes even more clear by the end of the first season, where so many different threads that seemed meaningless originally when we were watching them suddenly become so much more obvious what they were doing and clear in the final reveal mother figure that Bean had is actually still alive and has actually just been petrified by a drink. And this is all one side of the story, even without even touching on the fry of this cartoon world, Elfo. Hi, I'm Elfo. <laughs> what are all your names? Man, <laughs> this dude. All right, so we set the scene. Elfo is an elf, naturally, and Matt really seems to enjoy throwing this man in a blender which is almost a literal thing a few times because man, this guy just keeps getting his shit kicked into him. Extract a small quantity of blood. I only have a small quantity of blood. My brain feels dry. So Alpha lives in an elf world, Elfwood, separated from the crap sack world of Bean by a magic door. But his is a horror of a totally different kind He's in a world that forces happiness even when he's not, and when it comes out that he slept with the Elf King's daughter, like the true Elf Chad that he is, he's sentenced to hanging while the elves around him sing a cheerful song because nobody is allowed to be unhappy in Elfwood. Sound like anything else? It employs almost a big brother level of force control to the area. That said, since elves aren't heavy enough to actually snap their necks from the hanging that they're going through, they actually die of old age first. Eventually, he escapes to the crapsack world of Bean, where violence, death, and mediocrity is the modus operandi of the day today. So his mere definition of elf rebellion is actually pretty mild when it's compared to this real world. And he's actually kind of a male tsundere because of the ridiculous amount of abuse that he takes. He's just sort of more of the protagonist in that sense. Um, Really, though, he's sort of the tsundere towards Bean. Uh, he has this one-sided affection, while Bean and Lucy, who Lucy's a literal demon sent to Bean to tempt her to do bad things, while he initially had the piss kicked out of him by her. I'm already cursed enough. I don't need some demon making my life worse. Oh, that's no lady's maze and having himself nearly being put through a world of suffering because he's linked to Bean no matter what, before Bean realizes he's a fun friend and a good drinking partner. No, seriously, that, that, that happens. And this trio kind of forms the id, ego, and super ego trio with Lucy being the tempting evil character, Elfo being the altruistic side, and of course, Bean being the super ego that decides things and Elfo generally gets ignored. Anyway, this might be getting a bit long, but I just had to talk about the show since it's debuting season three on Netflix in a few weeks on January 15th, 2021. And by the time this is out, this may actually be the day of or something around that time. So if you haven't already seen the first two seasons, this is really just your call out to check it out as soon as possible. So you're just all so caught up on for the new season. 
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this rant has been somewhat coherent. I did write a script for it for once, and I even have a teleprompter now, so hopefully it's a little bit less kind of all over the wall and crazy and ridiculous. Um, but I am taking suggestions for what I should be doing in the future. Um, I have some ideas for a Carmen San Diego video and a How to Train Your Dragon video. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. My name is Splice, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.